Hello friends, welcome to this intermediate prenatal flow. Um, I'm so excited to lead you in this flow today and want to encourage you just to pace it yourself, listen to your body, listen to how you're feeling, adjust and adapt away. Um, in a prenatal flow, the pace is a little bit different because we're always adjusting and tweaking things to make sure it's comfortable and that we have room for the growing belly. Um, I highly recommend props as well, especially blocks because they sometimes just give you a little bit of extra space if you need it. So round up your mat, a block if you have it, grab some water, play some fun music if you want to, and meet me on the mat. Hello and welcome to our intermediate prenatal flow. We're gonna to begin today's flow by having a quick refresher on breathing techniques, uh, pelvic floor activation, and your transverse abdominus activation, TVA, which is that waistband set of ab muscles that's used for bracing. So all three of those things, breath, pelvic floor, and your TVA are really important for a healthy pregnancy, but it'll also help you have a better labor and delivery and a better recovery. So if you get nothing else from this video today, I hope that you walk away knowing how important it is for you to work on the pelvic floor and the TVA with your breath. So we'll start with a quick refresher of that, then we'll set a nice intention for our practice and get flowing. So start by coming to an easy seated pose on your hip bones, on your sitting bones, so that you can sit up tall. And let's just relax the arms, relax the hands, whatever's comfortable for you. Uh, lengthen the spine, take a big breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Let's do that one more time. Just a big breath in. Exhale, let it all go. Now, as we keep breathing, let's start to inhale and match the length of the inhale to the length of the exhale. So we're just setting a nice rhythm that's natural for us. <clears throat> And as we continue to breathe, also um, starting to breathe with a little more intention where we breathe in in a way where we're filling the lungs from bottom to top. So practice that a few times. Breathing in at the belly, up to the ribs, up to the chest, exhaling all the air out. And that's a typical way that we breathe during yoga classes. And um, we'll be adding to that uh, extra mindfully with this prenatal flow so that we get the added benefit of the pelvic floor activation and the TVA. So let's start by thinking about the pelvic floor. On the next exhale, just start to activate and elevate your pelvic floor. When you start to inhale, relax the pelvic floor. Now pick it up again, exhale all the breath out. Inhale, big breath in, lengthen the spine. Pick up the pelvic floor, exhale. Let's do that two more times. Relax and inhale. Activate your pelvic floor, exhale. One more time like this. Inhale and relax. Activate your pelvic floor, exhale. Now keep doing that. We'll start to layer in the TVA on top of that, which will make this uh, work a little bit more intense for you. So as we inhale, we relax and lengthen the spine. Now pick up the pelvic floor and then also activate your core like you're trying to pull your belly button toward your spine and then exhale. Now relax, inhale, activate the pelvic floor, pull in the TVA, Exhale all the air out. Inhale and relax. Activate the pelvic floor, activate the TVA, exhale. Let's do that two more times, just practicing. Inhale, relax it all. Activate the pelvic floor, activate the TVA, exhale. Last time. Inhale, relax it all, sit up tall, big breath in. Activate your pelvic floor, activa, activate the TVA, and then exhale all the air out. 
good. Now just come back to your yoga breathing, inhaling and exhaling in a nice rhythm, filling the lungs from bottom to top. Maybe closing the eyes for a few breaths, relaxing the face, and setting a little intention for today's practice. And our intention that I'm going to give you, you're free to choose something else if it speaks to you, but the one that I'm going to go with is just acknowledging that pregnancy is an exciting and amazing and joyful time, but it can also be a little overwhelming. There's lots of things to do, lots of things to prepare, lots of changes in your body, lots of emotions. It's just a lot. And that's okay. We're taking this time, this little carved out piece of time, to set aside all of those things on your mind and instead turning inwards, thinking of nourishing yourself, your body, your baby. So I'll just use the word nourish today as our intention. So just resting here with that thought of nourishing your body, yourself, and your baby. Just a couple more breaths. And on the next exhale, gently opening the eyes. Big breath in, exhale, relax. So let's touch our shoulder tops, make some circles with the elbows, just warming up the joints, prepping them for some weight bearing work. And I just wanna add, let's reverse the direction, that if that breathing technique with the pelvic floor activation and the TVA activation was brand new to you or um, you found it confusing, this was not a comprehensive um, guide on that. This was just a little refresher, assuming you already were familiar with that. Let's do the rest too. So there are tons of resources out there um, on YouTube, articles, things about pregnancy, fitness with pregnancy that will break that down for you more and help you to practice that better. Go the other way with this. So I highly recommend you looking some of those up if that was um, unfamiliar to you. Now, let's come back to our prayer pose, sit up tall, have a deep breath in, activate the pelvic floor and the TVA, exhale. Coming back to that. So, breathe in, relax, exhale, start to activate, and now we'll start to twist to the left, looking over the back shoulder. Inhale, come back to neutral, exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, a big breath in, lengthen the spine, exhale, keep going, just flowing with your own pace which is set by your breath, so flowing with your breath. It's a good time to practice that core activation and pelvic floor activation. And as we flow through this a few more times, just a word on twists during pregnancy. So it's great we get to keep doing twists while we're pregnant because twists are so great for your spine and your mo mobility and they feel great. They're my favorite, but we want to approach our twists just slightly different while we're pregnant. Um, traditionally in yoga, we would think of twisting from say the belly button area up, but in prenatal yoga, we want to be a little more mindful about our twists. We're kind of dialing them back a little bit, but we're still able to do them. So think instead of twisting from the belly area up, think of twisting from the chest up. So it's more of an upper back thing, kind of opening the chest, opening the shoulders, shoulder blades, and getting a little rotation in your upper back. So we're working for stability in the hips and the belly. So we want our belly to kind of uh, point in the same direction as our hips. So hug that baby in tight on your exhales. By using the TVA, let's just do this one more per side, just warming up the back and the arms, getting the hang of moving with our breath, and then just coming back to neutral. On an inhale, reach up, 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 lengthen the sides, lengthen the arms, exhale, pull down through the shoulder blades, letting go of tension in the back, 
big breathing, moving at your own pace. Letting go of tension and stress at the upper back and neck area. Moving with breath, practicing that core activation, pelvic floor activation on your exhales. Let's inhale, reach up, activate and exhale. Coming all the way down to rest, good. So we'll head to all fours for a little cat and cow and actually a good bit of mat work. So one thing I highly recommend in prenatal yoga is props. They're great. If you need a block for anything, use it. If you need to pad your knees extra, use it. Like take the time you need to be comfortable. So spread the fingers, align the hands right under the shoulders, align the knees right under the hips, stabilize your shoulders, and yes, pull in that core. So when we're here in all fours and our belly's facing the floor, this is a great time to practice that breathing because you can really feel yourself hugging the baby up better. So give your baby a little hug. Deep breath in, on the inhale, aim the tailbone up, lift the heart very gently now in cow. On the exhale, aim the tailbone down, round into cat. Inhale, come back into cow pose. Exhale, round gently into cat. Keep flowing with your breath, but again, it's a great chance to practice that activation. So on the inhale, we relax, shoulders are active, then lift the pelvic floor, squeeze the TVA, ease into cat stretch. And cat pose is a nice place to practice that too because we're rounding the back. You kind of feel the core activation a little bit more. So we're working through spinal extension and spinal flexion for some spinal mobility. But we're also using this as a chance to work on that breathing technique. Okay, one more time. Come back into cow for extension. Head into cat for flexion. And then come back to neutral all fours. Stabilize the shoulders once again. Stabilize the core once again. On an inhale, let's lift the right arm, just gently opening up into a twist. Exhale, come back down to all fours. Inhale, lift the left arm. Exhale, ease it down. So it's the same thing, just keep flowing with your breath as we talked about with our seated twist. Think of this as being like a nice upper back opener. So keeping your belly facing the floor, keeping your core engaged. We're working the arms, we're stabilizing the shoulders, we're moving with our breath and getting that little bit of an upper back, upper back twist. Inhale, reach. Exhale, activate core, pelvic floor. Good job, let's do it one more time. Lift off through the right side. Now, bring that right hand underneath your left. Slide it along the ground for thread the needle. Ease down, rest the right side of your face on the mat and walk your left arm out long if it feels nice. Taking a deep breath in and out. We'll bring the left hand back, press up to all fours. Same thing, other side, inhale, lift the left arm, gentle twist. Exhale, thread the needle, easing down to the left side of your face. Maybe walking that right hand and arm out. One full breath, in and out. We'll bring the hand back, press up to all fours. Have a deep breath in. And then we're going to take it to child's, but it's going to look a little different with a belly, if you've got a belly yet. So knees out wide, toes kind of in towards each other, and then easing down very gently into this wide-legged version of child's pose. You can have your arms out. The rest of it's just normal child's. Arms can be out in extended child's. Or you can stack your hands and rest your forehead on your hands, whatever's comfortable. Let's take one more deep breath in and out. Just giving our wrists a little break. And then easing back up to all fours. So doing some mat work today because it helps us find that TVA and pelvic floor activation. Palms planted, shoulders active, core engaged. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and then stabilizing the core, heading into a little spinal balance, AKA bird dog pose. So thinking of keeping your shoulders stable the whole time, let's lift the right leg straight back, flex at the ankle, and maybe lift the left arm with it. Maybe, that's up to you. Ease down to all fours. Now lift the left leg, flex the ankle, possibly the opposite arm as well, and then back down, starting to flow with it. Inhale, we lift. Exhale, we lower. Inhale, we lift. Exhale, we lower. Find your own pace with this by matching your movement to your breath. It's not a race. We're moving mindfully and slowly. We're keeping our hips level. We're keeping our weight bearing shoulder super active. We're breathing with it. We inhale, lift off. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, lift off. Exhale, ease it down. Let's do one more per side. Again, just moving at a mindful pace. And then finding all fours, once again, stabilizing everything. So your shoulders are stable, your core is stable. Take a deep breath in. Now on the exhale, tuck the toes. Lift the knees, exhale. Lower the knees back down to the mat. Inhale, relax the pelvic floor. Now exhale, activate the pelvic floor, activate the core, lift the knees. Exhale. Inhale, lower back down. Before you exhale, activate the pelvic floor and the core, and then lift the knees, exhale. Inhale, come back down to the mat. Activate core and pelvic floor, lift the knees, exhale. A few more times. Bring the knees down gently, inhale a big breath. Activate the pelvic floor and the core, lift the knees, exhale. Deep breath in, lower the knees. Shoulders are working hard, everything's working hard. Exhale, lift, activate. Let's do it three more times. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift the knees, activate. Two more times, big breath in. Activate, lift, exhale. Last one, big breath in, lower the knees. Activate everything, lift off and exhale. Good, lower down to the knees gently. Come back to that wide-legged version of child's pose. Exhale as you ease into it. If your wrists are a little tired, you can give them a few circles one way and then the other way. Find a relaxing child's pose and rest for three deep breaths. On your next inhale, let's start to ease back up to all fours. Getting knees under the hips, walking our hands out in front of us a little bit, spreading fingers, planting hands, stabilizing shoulders, and then tucking toes. Let's inhale, lift a downward facing dog. In our downward dog, let's bend the knees, aim the tailbone up, Stabilize their shoulders by pulling the shoulder blades away from your head and neck. So we don't want to shrug and cause tension at the neck. We want to release that. Arms are active. Hands are pressing down. Tailbone's lifting high. And it's like we're pressing our heart towards our thighs. Let's alternate with some little heel presses. Let's bend one knee, press the other heel down. Gently switching sides. Flowing with it a few times. Getting a nice lengthening in the back of the legs. And some nice action in the bottoms of the feet and the toes and the ankles. Now to come out of this, we're gonna tiptoe forward into a forward fold, which might look a little different for you if you've got a belly right now. Let's bend the knees. On an inhale, swan dive up. 
exhale to your prayer pose. Good. So normally in yoga, when we come to mountain pose, we have feet hip width and parallel. Ta-da, very nice and neat. But if you're hinging up and down like we're going to be doing in just a minute, you might need a little wider uh, stance so that you have room and it's more comfortable. So again, tweak away. Prenatal yoga uh, has a lot of little tweaks that you'll find you have to do as you go. Widening stances, um, wider bases, um, blocks, straps. Like There's a lot of adjustments, so just go with the flow. So come to your mountain pose, whatever that is for you right now. Ground at your feet, though, as always, and stand tall, palms facing forward, good posture. Let's take a big breath in. As we exhale, activate pelvic floor and TVA. Good. On the next inhale, rise up through the arms. Exhale, let's come down to a chair pose. So send the hips down and back, feet are planted, core is engaged so that there's no arching at the low back, there's no flexion anywhere either. Nice, straight, neutral back. Inhale, let's flow with it. Big breath, and then big breath out. Moving with your breath. Activating that pelvic floor and TVA on your exhales. And not overdoing. Remember our intention today is to nourish. So we're moving really mindfully in prenatal yoga. Moving in a way that brings us nourishment. Never forcing anything. Never doing anything that hurts. Never doing anything that just doesn't feel quite right. But moving extra mindfully in prenatal yoga. Nourishing yourself, your body, and your baby. Let's do this three more times. Just coming down into that little chair pose. Activating core and pelvic floor. Last time. Exhale, chair pose. Let's hold it for just three breaths. So deep breath in. Exhale. Activate your core. Don't forget that. Big breath in. Exhale. Let's go down one more inch. Last time. Big breath in. And exhale. Let's rise all the way up. And rest. So have a sip of water if you need it. Um, shake your arms out if they're tired. And then we'll kind of reset about two thirds of the way up the mat for a couple rounds of a modified sun salutation. Um, a word on prenatal yoga again is if you're used to vinyasa flow or power flow, it's quite different because prenatal yoga is slowed down. It can still be challenging and it can still be fun um, but it's just a totally different pace because transitions are slower because you have to be careful with how you move and set up your poses and your, your balance is different and things like that. So it's just a little bit different pace. So just know that before you take any prenatal yoga. It's just going to be a little different. So embrace it. Have joy in it. Let's come to that version of mountain pose, whatever feels right for your stance. Nice tall posture. Deep breath in. Exhale, coming back to that word, nourish, today. On the next inhale, let's rise up. As we exhale, swan dive down, bending the knees as much as you need to. Let your head hang and relax. On the next inhale, bring it up to a nice flat back. Exhale, release. We'll step the right leg back for a lunge where you can lower the knee if you want to, or you can stay low like I am right now or you can bring the arms all the way up into a crescent lunge. It's really whatever feels best for you at this point. Have a big breath in and exhale, ease it down. We'll step carefully to downward facing dog. So lengthen the spine, have a big breath. On the next inhale, let's come forward into a kneeling plank, lower the knees, activate the core, give that baby a little hug. And then we're just gonna have a little baby tricep or a little tricep push up today if you'd like to, where we shift forward, chaturanga, press right back up, take it to downward dog. You can omit that if you want to, if you don't feel stable doing it or if it feels awkward, just omit it. Inhale, we can lift the right leg up if we want to. 
exhale, hug it through, step forward. Again, choose your lunge. Maybe we rise up, maybe we stay down. It's up to you and how you feel. Remember, nourish, ease it down. Step to forward fold, which is probably a little wider. Inhale, let's start to hinge up, swan diving up. Exhale, finish in a chair pose. Good, let's do the other side. Breathe in, exhale, swan dive down. Let your head and neck relax. Inhale, come up to that flat back halfway. Exhale, relax it down. This time, step your left leg back. Take your time, find your lunge, and we'll inhale, rise up if we want to. Exhale, ease it down, stepping to downward facing dog. Have a breath in. We can flow forward in the kneeling plank, giving that baby a little hug so that our core is tight and supported. If we'd like to, we can have the little tricep push-up, easing back to downward dog. Option to lift your left leg up and exhale, bend the knee, step it all the way through into your lunge. Inhale, find whatever lunge you're working with today and then ease it down. Carefully step to forward fold, bend the knees, inhale, rise all the way up, finish in a chair pose. Nice job, breathe in, exhale, relax, prayer pose. So you probably noticed that I've swapped out upward facing dog or cobra for just a tricep push up. And if the tricep push up isn't working for you, just omit it. If you feel weak or awkward at the belly area at all, then dial it back. Because what we're trying to do is build core stability, not um, put ourselves in an awkward situation. So we always want the core to feel stable. So listen to that as you flow through one more round with me. On the inhale, let's rise back up. As we exhale, swan dive down. Bend the knees. Inhale, come up to halfway. Exhale, relax. Step your right leg back. Look forward, get your balance. If we're coming up to a crescent lunge, we ease up carefully. Exhale, ease it down, stepping to downward facing dog. On the next inhale, we'll flow forward into kneeling plank, lower the knees, activate the core so it's very supported, shoulders are stable. Maybe we shift forward, chaturanga, and then press right back up, taking it to downward dog. On the inhale, lift the right leg. If you want to, that's optional too. Exhale, step it forward into your lunge. On an inhale, finding that crescent lunge. And exhale, easing down, stepping to forward fold. Bend the knees, inhale, swan dive up. Finish in chair pose, exhale, active core. Inhale, sweep it up, we'll do the left side. Exhale, swan dive down. Head and neck relax. Inhale, bring it up to flat back. Exhale, relax the spine. Step your left leg back. Find your lunge. Maybe you're kneeling. Maybe you're coming up into crescent lunge. Find whatever works for you. And then ease it down. Stepping to downward facing dog. On the next inhale, flow into plank. Lower the knees. Support the core. Maybe shift forward to chaturanga. Press her right back up, take it to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up, exhale, step it through. Find your lunge, remember take your time. Inhale, rise, we have to tweak these poses. If we've got a belly, exhale, ease it down. Step to your forward fold, bend the knees. Inhale, swan dive up, exhale, chair pose. Let's inhale, release, exhale, Relax, take a deep breath in, exhale, let it go. So coming to step out wide on your mat for some wide-legged squats. One thing about, uh, another thing about prenatal yoga is just listening to your heart rate. So making sure that your heart rate isn't so elevated that you're uncomfortable or you couldn't carry on a decently carry on a conversation. So you're just kind of aware of your body and how you're doing. Remember our word, nourish. So dial it back when you need to. Press your feet into the mat. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, take it to your squat. Pull down through the shoulder blades. Inhale, ease it back up. Exhale, squat.
squatting. So we're sending the hips down and back, making sure that the knees are safe. Let's practice our breath. Surprise. Practice our breath again. So on the inhale, rise. On the exhale, pull down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, pull it down. One more time, big breath in, exhale. All right, so inhale, rise. Now we'll take a little swan dive down. So that we've kind of hinged down and then keeping your hips back, let's shift to the left, lengthening the right leg. And then shift to the right, lengthening the left leg. And we're just kind of flow very uh, fluidly through this where we're keeping the hips back, not letting the knee jut too far forward. We're not putting pressure on the knee. Good, and the next time we flow to the left, let's take it all the way down. So, resting on the foot, making sure this feels okay for your ankle, flexing gently at the right foot, and then left hand plants. We inhale, just twist gently open, exhale, ease it down. Two more times, inhale, gentle twist. Remember what we talked about with twists. We're basically letting it happen at the upper back. Ease this down. Now, lift off, come the other way with it. All the way down, gently, gently, gently. Good. Now the right hand presses into the floor. Inhale, twist open with the left arm. Exhale, ease it down. Inhale, flow gently, getting that upper back twist. And one more time, ease it down, and we'll inhale, lift off, coming to a straddle split. Let's aim our feet parallel to each other now. Inhale, a big breath in, lengthen the spine. Exhale, relax, easing down to a straddle split. Stretching the inner thighs and the hamstrings, letting the head and neck relax. Let's have two more breaths here. And on the next inhale, let's rise the torso up parallel to the floor. Put the hands directly under the shoulders. This is where a block would come in handy if you had one. You could put it right under your hands. We'll put the right hand at the center point. Inhale, flow the left arm up. Exhale, flow it down. Inhale, flow the right arm up. Exhale, flow it down. Let's do that again one more time. Just gently twisting through the upper back, keeping the hips facing the floor, keeping the belly nice and supported. Good job. So let's heel to our way in a couple of times. Come down to that wide-legged squat again. Let's bring our hands to our thighs. Inhale as we rise. So we're upside down. We don't want to get lightheaded. Big breath in. Exhale, relax. Come to your prayer pose. Walk your feet in and we can turn to face the short side of the mat once more. So in your mountain pose, here we go. Nice posture, take a deep breath in. Exhale, activate your pelvic floor and your TVA. On an inhale, rise up. Exhale, let's swan dive, but stop when we're halfway down for airplane pose. Let's really think about drawing your shoulder blades together as we're here, and then reaching the arms straight back behind you. If you really reach through your fingertips, you'll absolutely feel a lot of tricep work happening. So great for your back, upper back, shoulder blades, triceps, and guess what else? Your pelvic floor and your core. So activate your pelvic floor, pull in your core. Deep breathing, not holding our breath, we can hold the core activation. That would be great practice, but let's not hold a breath. Deep breathing, let's have one more breath here. As we exhale, activate. And on the next inhale, let's rise back up. Reach, 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 reach. Exhale, hands come to prayer pose. Let's put hands on hips, and let's step the right leg back for crescent lunge. So step it back. When we get to our crescent lunge, 
Let's think of aiming the tailbone down so that our spine is aligned better. Let's think of keeping our hips squared forward. And let's think about activating pelvic floor and core. Now on an inhale, let's reach the right arm up, bend at the elbow, and then the left arm comes over just to help you get a little tricep stretch for that right tricep. As far as the lunge goes, we're pressing through the right heel, the back heel, gently lifting the right knee perhaps, getting a stretch in that right hip. Let's ease out of it with the arms, back to the hips, step back to our mountain pose, pause for a breath, and then step the left leg back. Same thing, other side, pelvis points down, uh, hips are squared forward, pressing through your back heel, active core. On the next inhale, reach the left arm up, bend at the elbow, bring the right arm over just to help you get a little tricep stretch. We don't want any pain or strain in the shoulder, so make sure everything feels A-OK -okay in your joints. Deep breathing. And gently release the arms. Hands come back to the hips. And we'll step back to our mountain pose. Awesome job. So we'll head down to the mat now. So inhale, rise up. Exhale, take a swan dive down. Come down, bend the knees so you can get your hands to the mat and just ease down to all fours. When we get to all fours, let's keep the toes tucked for now. Ease up into a kneeling place. Of course, if it's more comfortable to flatten your feet, you can. Um, I just find it gives a little more stability. We're aiming the tailbone down. We're activating our glutes gently. We're activating our core. And then we're reaching back to stretch the chest. We can just reach arms for one another or we can interlace. It's whatever is more comfortable for you. Just opening up the chest and shoulders. Deep breathing. Our posture gets strained when pregnant. When we have the weight of the belly pulling on the low back. So a nice chest opener like this helps us battle some of the upper back rounding that we start to do. Let's have one more breath here. Ease out of it. Give your arms a nice little wiggle. Now, if that felt great, you can do it again. If you want a little bit more of a back extension, we're going to do a baby version of camel pose, just a little baby version. So bringing fists to the bottom of the spine, still engaging glutes, still engaging core, resting hands there, not pushing. Let's start to draw shoulder blades together more, elbows together more. Shoulder blades are also pulling down so that we're not rising up into a shrug. Deep breaths in. Exhale, pull the elbows even a little closer together. Keep your pelvis neutral. Try not to have a back bend in your lower back. We're not going for that. And then just a tiny breath on your next breath, just a tiny lift through the heart for this kind of baby version of camel. Where we're opening the upper back, having a little back bend just in the upper back only. Giving that baby a little hug on your exhale to make sure your core is supported by drawing the TVA in. On an exhale, release. Untuck your feet if they're tucked. Give your arms a little wiggle. Have a breath. And then let's ease down to that wide-legged child's pose again. Take your time getting there. Ease down very gently. Let your spine and your back muscles relax. If it's comfortable, bringing our arms out in front of us into an extended child's and walking our hands toward the right side of the mat to stretch the left side body. And then walking our hands to the left side of the mat to stretch the right side body.
steady breathing, letting your breath come back to normal. If you're getting a little out of breath, letting your heart rate start to slow down again. Bringing hands back to neutral and even back to frame the face as we start to press up and out of our child's pose. Let's ease onto the hips. Bring your knees out to one side. Hips come to the mat. Legs come out in front of us. We'll have a hip stretch. So find the sitting bones. Feet on mat. Pull the core in. Lengthen your spine. Hands behind you with fingertips pointing towards your body. But we're not sinking into our shoulders. We're thinking of supporting our shoulders the whole time. Now, let's cross the left ankle over the right knee into this version of pigeon pose, which hopefully gives us a lot of room for a belly if you've got one right now. <laughs> we're flexing the ankle and we're gently pressing that left knee away from the body to get a stretch in the glutes and the hips. Deep breathing and easing out of this. We'll cross the right leg over the left. You might need a little help at times getting there, that's okay. Flex the ankle, still tall in the spine, shoulders are still active. Gently, let's start to ease out of this. I'm gonna turn so you can see me, but you don't have to. So bringing the right foot into the left inner thigh for a hamstring stretch. So a lot of times we have it straight in front of us, but today let's open it up just a little bit. It'll just help us have a little bit more room. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Let's face the extended leg and then exhale, gentle hinge from the hips. Making sure that we have plenty of room for the baby. Nice long spine. And we're stretching the hamstring and maybe hopefully the lower back as well. Deep breathing. Let's have one more breath here. And on the next inhale, hinge back up and switch your legs. Extend the right leg, bring the left leg in. Let's gently kind of turn to face the extended leg. Inhale a big breath. Exhale, hinging from the hips, stretching the hamstring and the lower back. Breathing deeply, relaxing your face and your jaw. have one more breath here. On the inhale, hinging back up and coming to just a cross-legged position, whatever is comfortable for you. We'll have a nice stretch for the upper back. Get a lot of tension there sometimes. So let's bring the left arm up first and wind the right arm underneath for eagle. We can wrap our hands, and if that's not comfortable, we can always just hug whatever feels better for you today. Once we're at the version we wanna be at, let's think of gently lifting the elbows and the arms, and at the same time, pulling the shoulder blades down the back, getting a nice release at the, where the shoulders meet the neck. Trying not to hold tension there. Deep breaths. We'll ease out of this. This time we'll bring the right arm up first and the left arm underneath, winding or hugging, whatever you like better. And then gently lifting through the arms and pulling down at the shoulder blades. Still seated tall through the spine. Still matching our inhale to our exhale. On an exhale, ease out of this. Hands rest. Long, tall spine. Let's let one ear float to the shoulder, stretching the opposite side of the neck. And back up to neutral and then going the other way. Mm. 
easing back up. Big breath in. Exhale, relax. Awesome. So we'll ease down to the mat on our left side. So turn to the side of your hips. Ease down to the forearm. Ease down to cradle your head with your left arm. Right hand rests in front of you. This is our final relaxation pose today. Resting on the left side. Relaxing your face and your jaw. Just have a few breaths here, just letting it go. So on your exhales, just letting any tension go. Letting yourself relax. Letting yourself melt into the mat. So if you have the time, I highly recommend you staying here for a few more minutes and just resting, nourishing your body, sending nourishment to your baby. Otherwise, we'll start to ease up by pressing the right hand into the mat, pressing up gently, and just coming back to whatever's comfortable, an easy seated pose for you the hip bones seated tall having a deep breath in and out eyes closed and just returning to that intention that we set at the very beginning that with so much going on at this amazing and joyful and exciting time in your life making sure to continue to give yourself the nourishment you need and send nourishment to the baby so nourish, nourish yourself, nourish your baby, taking that intention with you as you step off the mat today as well. Bringing hands to prayer pose in front of the heart. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. And the light and life in me honors the light and life in you. Namaste.